Usopp has never told a lie in One Piece. In fact, he may very well be the worst liar in the entire series because each and everything that comes out of his mouth ends up being true, thus leading to the prophetic nickname of Nostradamus. So if you're not aware, there is a trend in One Piece where all of Usopp's lies do eventually come true to the point where by chapter 40, chapter 40, Usopp has effectively spoiled a massive chunk of the series. And he may very well have already spoiled the ending of One Piece with the very few handful of lies that have yet to come come true. But let's kick things off with the original lie. The pirates are coming. Usopp's character very much incorporates the boy who cried wolf just in reverse, because almost nobody believes what Usopp says when he says it. However, that rarely stops his statements from being true, such as when Captain Kuro did eventually attack Syrup Village to fulfill the Usoppian warning that pirates were going to attack. This should have been the moment where people started to pay attention to Usopp's words. However, fair enough, this was just one case. And even a brutally dismembered Usopp's nose stuck onto a broken clock will be right at least twice a day. But luckily for us, we need to to look no further than Syrup Village to discover that this is no accident. Usopp told a wide variety of lies to Kaya, all of which have come to fruition, such as when he claimed, I fought a giant goldfish that lived in the South Seas, and you should have seen the size of its poop. It was so big that I thought it was an island and moored my ship to it. And this very goldfish would appear at the end of Little Garden named the Island Eater. So it quite literally eats and excretes islands. Islands almost certainly large enough to moor a ship to. Most people know about that one. That one's very common. However, a lesser known fact is that there is a part two to this lie, a sequel, a lie sequel. Because Usopp goes on to say that he chopped the giant goldfish up, which was actually done by Dorian Broggy, and then he took it to a land of little people, which Usopp did eventually visit in the form of the Tontata tribe on Dressrosa. But this, this is where things get a bit wild. Because according to the Tontata, the fighting fish of Dressrosa are actually relatives of the giant goldfish that Usopp encountered at Little Garden. This was revealed in chapter 713, by the way, titled Usoland, where Usopp told two further lies that contain massive spoilers for the end of One Piece. But we'll get to those in a bit because we are far from done with Kaya. At one stage, Usopp claims that he was searching Kaya's estate to catch a giant mole creature, one which Usopp would go on to find, albeit on Alabaster, not quite Syrup Village, so a bit wrong there, but he found it in the form of Miss Merry Christmas. Although at one point, we could more accurately say that the mole caught Usopp. Nostradamus also told many prophecies to his crew, including the existence of Cerberus. Then cut to Thriller Bark and Usopp's group is the first to encounter a real life Cerberus. When I say real life, I mean real life fictional pirate Cerberus. But later on, the rest of the Straw Hats actually caught Cerberus, which fulfilled the Usopp prophecy because he and the Usopp pirates were trying to catch Cerberus on Syrup Village. And also Luffy wanted to eat Cerberus, but that's a different matter entirely. Meanwhile, another mythical creature Usopp conjured into existence was a dragon, depicted here as a funky lizard, but depicted in chapter 655 as a legit massive big F off dragon. And and again, it was Usopp's group that first encountered the dragon, which has a name, by the way. This is dragon number 13. It's not a particularly creative name, but it and its at least 12 other associates were brought into existence by Vegapunk, or I guess one of the Vegapunks at least. And again, Luffy wanted to eat it, except this time they did. Zoro sliced it up and then they cooked the dragon. Thus starting a very bizarre subtrend of not only Usopp's lies coming true, but Luffy then wanting to eat Usopp's truths. But next up, we have a bit of a contentious slide. Because according to the Viz translation, Usopp yells at his crew to run away from the quote, hideous fruit selling freak. However, this was back in the early days, and I mean the very early days of the Viz translation, which had a bit of a tendency to be extremely inaccurate and take a lot of liberties. It was so bad that current Viz translator Stephen Paul even did his own fan translations of the early volumes, which reveals a shockingly important piece of Usopp lore. Because instead of hideous fruit selling freak, Usopp more accurately said, run! It's an alien from the vegetable stand planet. Very important because this has since gone on to come true. Aliens were very blatantly discovered during NL's cover story where we encountered the space pirates, a group of extremely eccentric designs even by One Piece world standards. But also it's heavily implied that the sky people are all aliens that colonize the One Piece planet after fleeing from their ancestral homes on the moon. In which case, not only do aliens exist thanks to Usopp, but he has actually met them himself. Towards the end of Syrup Village, Usopp proclaims that he 
is going out to sea alone, a thought which would come to fruition during Water 7 when Usopp left the crew. He also inherited the Going Merry, making Usopp the default captain. So in a way, the captain line briefly came true as well. But at this point, it's almost like Usopp has this ability to bend reality by sheer belief and willpower, perhaps a fourth brand of Haki. But a great example of this occurs in chapter 42, where Usopp makes the empty claim that he is an expert sniper after very luckily hitting a rock with a cannonball. But then again, you look at him now and he is easily one of the greatest snipers in the world. Pre-time skip, Usopp's abilities develop so much that he hits Bandam from more than a mile away to save Robin, and post-time skip, Usopp has unlocked Observation Haki, which has only made him more potent. Not to mention that he conjured the whole persona of Saga King, which literally means Sniper King, a figure that the world now believes actually exists due to the widespread bounty. In fact, when the fake Straw Hats got together, Mount Blutane was not impersonating Usopp. Instead, he was pretending to be Saga King, just like Usopp was. But next up, we have another contentious one though, because everyone knows about Usopp's claim that he has 8,000 followers. He's made this claim on multiple occasions, the most memorable of which to me was during Arlong Park, where he said, they call me Usopp the Demon King, and kings tremble at the name. Flee now and live. I have 8,000 followers behind me. And this did potentially come true on Dressrosa. The amount of toys that Sugar created were never fully quantified, but it was said to be in the thousands. And so Usopp may very well have already fulfilled this. And he certainly made a king tremble, as the then king of Dressrosa, Doflamingo, even issued Usopp with the only five-star bounty on the island. And as for the Demon King claim, look, Usopp did one better and is now known as a god. So I would say that he's very good at conjuring his own life goals. Such as when Usopp tried to spread a rumor that Luffy's 30 million berry bounty was actually for him, because Usopp was caught in the bottom left-hand corner of the photo, a gag which would go on to be replicated by Beppo in Trafalgar Law's bounty. Bad choice of words by me though, because this was no gag. After any slobby, a bounty of exactly 30 million berries was issued for Saga King, which rumor has it is actually Usopp in disguise. So Usopp not only predicted his bounty, but he also predicted that it would be masked by someone else. But for a prediction I wish became something else, in chapter 133, Usopp and Luffy created two giant snow monsters, figures that would disappointingly come into reality in the form of the Yeti Cool Brothers on Punk Hazard. Look, there are some One Piece characters that get unreasonable hate, like say Gecko Moria. Even I unreasonably dislike Gecko Moria. I recognize it's unreasonable. But the Yeti Cool Brothers are arguably the most disappointing and unnecessary characters to have ever existed in One Piece. But even then, I don't blame Oda for that. I blame Usopp because he is the one who told their truth in the first place. Because as powerful as he is, Usopp is often unaware of the consequences of his own words. Despite that, he is, however, incredibly clever, arguably even the smartest straw hat. Like that time when he simultaneously managed to wake up Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji by lying about there being a beautiful female sword master with meat. But now Usopp did a lot more than just wake the crew. Because in chapter 720, Rebecca, a beautiful female sword master, offered meat to Luffy, making this yet another case where Luffy either wanted to or did flat out actually eat one of Usopp's lie truths. And also, I just wanna linger on this for a second because I don't think anyone appreciates this the first time they read it. I certainly didn't. Luffy asks Rebecca why she isn't eating and she claims that she doesn't get hungry, to which Luffy responds, huh, like a samurai then, which is something that he learned from Kinemon and Momonosuke on Punk Hazard, but also something that would go on to be the driving force for Luffy to beat Kaido on Wano, to ensure that starvation in particular would never be an issue on that island again. So it's just interesting to see what Luffy takes note of. And that whole samurai not eating thing had a big impact on him. Not as big of an impact as Usopp has on this story though. And in chapter 713, Usopp does something very, very naughty when he states that his conqueror's haki is capable of knocking out 50,000 people with a single burst, essentially taking credit for what Luffy did on Fishman Island, but also setting the table for a future dinner where Usopp would serve none other than delicious Conqueror's Haki. In chapter 1024, Usopp takes credit for the burst of Conqueror's Haki, knocking out the enemies around him, and people actually believe this, thus bringing his lie at least halfway true. Look, here's the thing though. Usopp getting Conqueror's Haki is a natural conclusion for One Piece. It seems ridiculous, but consider that some people are born to be kings and have the will to rule. And then consider that Usopp is a man who calls himself a literal sniper king, also a demon king, and someone who relentlessly claims to be the captain, in addition to now being worshipped as a god. Some people are born to be kings and it would appear that Usopp is one of them. But to be fair, this lie has yet to fully come true, along with a handful of others. And just as a warning, these lies I'm about to say that have yet to come true may legitimately spoil One Piece. I am 100% serious. Because Usopp has spent his entire 
entire fictional pirate career spoiling One Piece, and one event that has yet to happen was when Usopp claims that he could defeat 10 of the giant shadows seen on Jaya. In regards to this, there was a fun thought that Usopp would somehow be responsible for defeating all 10 numbers on Onigashima, but that didn't happen, so it's something to look forward to in the future. As is the general lie of Saga King and the existence of Sniper Island. And one of my personal favorite ideas is that there is an actual Sniper Island in the new world with a legitimate Sniper King. And when Luffy meets him, he's going to say, Saga King, bruh, thanks so much for saving Robin that one time. And Sniper King will just go, no idea what you're talking about, but you're welcome, kid. There's also a fun idea that one day Syrup Village will be renamed Sniper Island in honor of Usopp after he becomes a global name. Syrup Village is actually located in the Gecko Island, so we just need to rename one of those islands, not, not all of them. For a bit of a misconception now, a lot of fans believe that Usopp's can't go to the island disease actually came true when Buggy caught a fever right before going to Laugh Tail. However, this is due to a rather sneaky fan translation that used Usopp's disease and misled a lot of people into actually believing that's what it was. I mean, to be fair, it had the same effect. Narratively, Buggy came down with a case of can't go to the island for reasons disease. But here's the big one. This is the lie that I mentioned in chapter 713. This is where Usopp told the Tontata tribe that he was a descendant of Lia Noland, something that I absolutely believe will come true, but in the same sort of way that Zoro is a distant relative of Rima. It's not something that's going to take the full focus of the story, but just another small thread of inherited will. And it feels very appropriate. A truthful man branded as a liar, having his legacy continued by a lying man branded as a truth teller. A few other Usopp lies include being a dinosaur sibling hunter, specifically siblings. He does not hunt only child dinosaurs. On Wano, Usopp also claimed that he had 10 children. And look, if you thought 8,000 followers was a lot, well, check out what Usopp said on Drum Island. During this arc, Usopp, in a state of delirium, claimed to have 74,000 followers. However, this was anime only, and the manga doesn't actually state a number, which means that it's the anime's problem to bring to life. And then we get to the ultimate lie, the one that we all know will 100% come true. By the end of One Piece, Usopp Usopp will become a brave warrior of the sea, perhaps even one of history's most memorable names. I mean, as it is, Usopp already has two statues dedicated to him in this world. And I do think that the name Usopp will one day be uttered on the same level as figures like Roger, Whitebeard, and of course, future pirate king, Monkey D. Luffy.